For at TV, the world is thinking. In, in essence, I'm giving you a theological critique of what's, of what's been happening. Um, as no doubt many of you will know, probably the greatest Marxist historian is Brenner. Just did a brilliant book called Merchants and Revolution. He did the great book on agrarian capitalism. And Brenner's Marxist thesis is that capitalism begins in England. And it begins in England with the, right, with the enclosure movement. Essentially a primary form of dispossession whereby peasants are driven off the land, so they're driven away from subsistence forms of living. And peasants in the Middle Ages in Britain, after the Peasants' Revolution, experienced what Poston, is a famous medieval historian, calls a golden age for workers, or, or the peasant class. They had um, four or five different terms of income. They were self-sufficient. There wasn't beggary as we know it today. In fact, beggary only emerged in the Tudor period, which is when the enclosures began. What happens then, according to Brenner's thesis, is that the... Um, and he doesn't explain quite why, is that the lords drove the peasants off the land and uh, those peasants became the proletariat in the cities and the land accrual that, and the profits generated therefrom then allowed the development of industrial capitalism on the basis of agrarian capitalism. But what Brenner doesn't mention is the economy that was destroyed. And the economy that was destroyed in medieval Europe was a Catholic economy. And in part, what I want to suggest to you is a Catholic economy is what we actually need. Because both secular forms of liberation that we've been promised are both disastrous. The left has been disastrous and the right has been disastrous. Let me tell you why. Okay, from the perspective, I'm building on the insights of the great Edwardian Catholic thinkers, Belloc and Chesterton. And according to Belloc, especially really Belloc, the real change is that um, both socialism and capitalism dispossess. Socialism dispossesses because it dispossesses the ordinary worker for the sake of the general good. Capitalism dispossesses because it dispossesses the ordinary worker for the sake of the monopolising capitalist. And so in effect, what you produce is but there are two systems of dispossession. The post-war settlement, the welfare state settlement, is nothing other than a left-wing acceptance of the dominance of monopoly capitalism. In Belloc's book, The Servile State, he talked about how people who think themselves radical have, only, have essentially accepted welfareism, uh, pursued via the state, as a means to buy off their legitimate demands for, for a share of the wealth. So in Belloc's thesis, what you have on the left is a left committed to essentially a servile as a serf, a servile relationship via welfare, and on the right, you still have a commitment to a monopoly accrual. And indeed, you could probably even argue that this is true of Keynes. So what we need to... And this, I think, this collusion between left and right has, in fact, been mirrored in our own day. So what we actually have is, is, the, is the left producing monopolies, transferring them to the right, producing monopolies again. You have state protection of expropriating markets. Therefore, the real key and the real task and the real future is to invent a new economic and social model. And part of that must be a civic conservatism. By conservative, I mean the notion of a widely distributed property and assets for all, which is the distributist thesis, which actually could be a left-wing or right-wing thesis, and then the ordo-liberal critique of neoliberalism. And the ordo-liberal critique of neoliberalism is that um, what's actually happened is that monopolies have tended, markets have tended to monopolies, and because the price of entry to markets is set so high, they end up with modal monopoly dominance. And so a civic economy based around local economies, based around widely distributed ownership, based around new models of association and new models of productivity, is really the post-capitalist future.